I've had great success manifesting things, and I go in and out of my seeming like, you know, perceived power into manifesting. And mm-hmm. and I do believe from my experience and from learning from a lot of the masters, like we're co-creators with life. Yeah. And as you're talking, it makes sense that because I've always like struggled with like, in to what degree are we co-creators? And you know, as you talk about like the frequency informs you know, the thoughts, behaviors, actions, Inform, results. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the frequency and form, the consciousness informs the frequency, mm-hmm. informs the form. Um, and that's like Harold Saxon Burr's work, the Yale researcher who studied mice with uterine cancer, mm-hmm. thought that the uterine cancer tumors emitted a field, mm-hmm. um, an electromagnetic field. And what he found was actually the field was there before the tumor, then the tumor, the form created up yeah. into this field because mm-hmm. that he saw mice with the same uterine cancerous yeah. uterine cancer signature field but the cancer hadn't developed yet but did like a couple weeks later right what i'm trying to say is like in as far as like manifesting and shifting things in life we are co-creators because our consciousness hopefully more conscious than subconscious mm-hmm. is informing the frequency into the field into the form mm-hmm. and what we, what we experience Mm-hmm. Um, so we have some power in co-creating based on our consciousness informing the frequency. And then there's life's intelligence and frequency mm-hmm. that's going to give us experiences and circumstances like a relationship um, or a tragedy or a trauma mm-hmm. that's going to give us an or a, you know leaky bladder <laughs> to give us the opportunity to self-reflect release, let go, deconstruct, all these things. Yeah. So it's that fine line between consciousness, um, like elevating your consciousness mm-hmm. to create new form of reality. Yeah. And being okay with all the circumstances that come your way, knowing that your soul, I think is kind of the way you put it, created these experiences for you. Yeah. And for your ascension. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, so the quote, I, I think quotes help people because it sort of points to the same thing in a more um, uh, sort of short form, succinct. but it's succinct. Yeah, yeah, like so life will present you with people and circumstances to reveal where you're not free. Right? So you're going to keep getting these in, invitations to see where in this case you're not free about the fact that right, just right now, these are the two words to focus on is right now. You don't know what it looks like. It's right now. It seems as though, and we don't even know right now because you might go for a run this afternoon and nothing happens. So that the the perpetuation of a history that you're not at peace with, that you're not allowing, that you're holding on to, is actually the quote unquote energy of manifestation. And I think you know, while you mentioned the word, it's one of these buzzwords, especially in spiritual communities. That I think gets tossed around with so <clears throat> little accuracy, because to me, the way that most people interpret manifestation is it's out there, right? It's something I have to do. So it's out there in the future. Like if I really manifest, I'll get the fill in the blank, you know, the, the dream partner, the job that I want, the money, the healing. Um, so as soon as you create space, you create time, right? So it's out there and there's going to be time and it's incumbent upon me to do it. And those are three, trif- the trifecta of inaccuracy as far as I'm concerned, because what you're doing is the life you already have is a byproduct of the you that you are for yourself. So you've been manifesting nonstop. You can't not manifest. As a human being, that's all you're doing. Mm. The question is, who are you that is the manifest, the precursor to the manifestation, which is happening instantaneously? It's not, oh, I, the limited version of myself that is focused on an unlimited experience How can I, it's sort of as redundant as picking up a red pen that's got red ink in it and saying, I'm going to manifest blue. Well, no, because the iteration of who you are right now has manifested the life that you're in resistance to. And so you, doesn't matter how much you try, aren't going to manifest a life that's not in keeping with the version of you that needs to be the precursor to that outcome. So manifestation has got nothing to do with who you, what you do or out there in time. It's who you be. And that's why I said to you, and you like had a beautiful sigh and you had this moment of release. I said, okay, if that doesn't necessarily happen next time, but two days, maybe 10 days from now, it's done. So you manifested at that moment, like if we had a urologist here who was able to me- somehow measure the strength of your sphincter. However, like my minute, I promise you at that moment that you had the release, they would have seen some extra strength in your sphincter. And it wasn't because you went for a run and didn't pee. It was because you manifested the experience of it prior to the event itself. Mm. 
So manifestation, if you really understand it, is about discovering the experience within yourself as, an ex as a frequency, which then is the precursor to the outcome. And most people have the other way around. I'll feel the way I feel if I can manifest the outcome that I feel is on the other side of that. Well, then that's the perpetual self-fulfilling prophecy of who you currently are, and that's why things don't work. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're working to the degree that you are manifesting who you currently are. So I know that's a lot, but if you can start to see you're living from a fulfilled future now, like this was one of the biggest things that hit me. Like most people think their past is behind them and their future is in front of them. Some sort of association with space like that. Mm -hmm. No, your past is here with you now and your future is here with you now. Uh, I'll never forget when I first started working with a PGA golfer and he tripled his winnings within two seasons, which was pretty significant. You, know, you go up to any company and say, oh, you know, triple your uh, bottom line, you know, within two years. They'd be like, okay, how, just tell me how much you want us to pay you. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so this was sort of in the middle of our first season together and he pretty much doubled in the first year. And I was waiting at the 18th green for him to finish his round. And one of the head uh, TV anchors for the Golf Channel was there. And he came up to me and he said, uh, oh, Peter, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, I've heard so much about your work. And obviously, so-and-so, like, it's incredible what they're doing. And congratulations on your success. He said, would it be okay if I sit down and have a chat with you sometime? And I said, sure. He said, because I've got a lot of things in my past. And I said to him, I said, no, you don't. And he was a bit confused. I said, they're with you right now. If they were in your past, you wouldn't have to sit down and talk to me. Right. So when you really get that, it's like you're living right now in your body, physiologically, emotionally and psychologically as though whatever happened in your last run and the runs prior to that is a problem. No, that's just what happened. I have no idea what's going to happen next time. So then you start to see, wow, my history and my perception of a future exist in who I am today. And for that reason, I'm either living with hurt and regret from a history that's already finished. You know, people say, let go of it. It's like, there's nothing to let go of. It's done. <laughs> the question is, to what degree can you let be with it? Right? To what degree can I accept and embrace my history? It's already done. And with regards to how I imagine a future, which is really a reflection of the history I've yet to accept, then you like go, oh, shit. Like, I just keep reacting, reacting to whatever I haven't fully accepted yet. And so now the speedboat is being informed by the wake as opposed to being driven to the direction that you're committed to. Mm. right yeah. and then you wonder why people's lives don't work so manifestation is a complete misnomer for most people they don't understand it they think it's something that's incumbent upon them it's in the future and it, for that reason it's got some time component no it's instantaneous and um if say you want to manifest something mm -hmm. like me personally or one you okay personally peter crone says yeah. you know what i'd really like to you know get a house in the south of france mm -hmm. do you just say do you just go what if i had a house, uh, a house in the south of france mm -hmm. and like feel into that like what what's your process i would ask the question why okay because the thing that we think we want is not what we want we want what we think is on the other side of having it okay and that experience is already in me so I can have the experience of, a, in this case, a house in the south of France before even having the house, at which point I may no longer need to have the house. Mm. We're everything that we're looking for. We're under the impression that it's out there is the means to getting that experience. And that's the facade. That's the lie. That's the pretense. And that's why people are victims of their circumstance. But they're not. It's the perception of the circumstance because they think there's something lacking in them in the first place. <sighs> so then you realize, you know, that we are everything that we're looking for. We're just collapsing it with the outside world as though that's where it's at. And so then we effort our lives away trying to get what we think is going to go on or the very experience that's actually available to us right now. Mm -hmm. Which I would put in words like freedom, peace, love, inherent worth. They're all there. Mm -hmm. And that's why life is a revelatory process. It's not about getting something. It's actually about removing and dissolving what's in the way of realizing that I am that which I'm looking for.
Thank you for listening to the Heal with Kelly podcast. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. And make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. Oh, and if you found this episode inspiring, please rate, review, and share Heal with Kelly so that we can grow our audience and reach more people. We truly appreciate it. Lots of love.